Welcome to Local Football Flavor, the show where we recognize the fact that the national media gets things wrong about your individual team, and they do it about every other franchise in the NFL as well. So what we do is we talk to educated local fans to learn the tendencies and the information that will help us win our bets, and they'll help us win our waiver wires. Today we're going to be talking about the Carolina Panthers, and lots of questions going on in Carolina in the fantasy world. How about Christian McCaffrey? Is he ever going to be healthy? When he is healthy, he's the greatest running back fantasy has ever known. Just he's never healthy. So how's that going to be? And then in terms of tendencies of the team, David Tepper is one of the few owners that actually gets talked about. And normally when owners get talked about, it's not in a positive light. Speaking of not a positive light, Matt Roll. Why is he still there? Everywhere I talk to someone, they wanted to get rid of him. We're going to see what our guest David wants to talk to about him. They have three quarterbacks in the room, Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, and then the third-round pick this year, Matt Corral. And then we're going to also discuss about the big man they just pick up, Ekuwanu. So our guest today, his name is David ETM. As I mentioned before, he is from the Bull City, Durham, North Carolina. He's been the biggest sports fan and a lifelong Panthers guy his entire life. And the one thing he tells us we need to know about him is when he enters Bank of America Stadium to watch those Panthers, he becomes the iciest man on the planet. So without further ado, here's local football flavor, Carolina Panthers. Welcome to Local Football Flavor, where we talk to local fans to get the real information of what's going on with their team. Yeah, so um, let's start off. So... Carolina, I guess the the elephant in the room here is your coach. Like, what the hell, damn guy? Um, <laughs> he's the only ca- he's the only active coach in the league who has failed to make the playoffs in two straight years. So basically, everyone else gets fired when that happens. Tepper was like, "Let's keep the party going." So, is there a vision? Is there anything happy possible happening, or are we just giving you guys the first pick in the drift and moving on? Yeah. Um, so I, I, my feelings about Matt Rule are like, you know, this is a hot seat year, first and foremost. So I don't, I don't really like understand like why he's still here. To be honest, I know. I mean, he's been. I mean, this is his third year, I believe, going into it. But even like how he's like gotten here is kind of you know even questioning to me. I mean, his what I know about him is his background. Uh, in college at Temple and Baylor. I know he's resurrected those programs and made them to be like, you know, he went from a two and 10 record at Temple to them, you know, going to a couple bowl games and then also uh, resurrecting Baylor after their scandal. And then, you know, going like 11 and three eventually in his his last year before uh, coming to Carolina in 2020. But I mean, but what is that really like compared to other college coaches that make the transition from college to NFL, how does that doesn't really compare that well when you talk about someone like Harbaugh or talk about someone like Nick Saban, even though he didn't do really well, he didn't do well in the NFL the first time, but he had won a, a national championship prior to making that that jump to the NFL. So you you like guys like that that have that you know that better resume and I mean, yes. I mean, respect to you know resurrecting programs after they've had a bunch of losing seasons. But I mean, this is the NFL is a lot different, and guys like Steve Spurrier and Nick and Nick Saban will tell you that. Like when they made that transition, it didn't go so well, you know. So I think he he's trying to like bring like that same like college like mentality into the into the league. Like that's what he's been doing, and you can't just talk to grown men the same way you talk to. Players. You can't coach them the same way and you can't just be, you know, playing around with positions, you know, like the same way you can do in college. Like, you know, in college, you can say, oh, uh, this quarterback is going to start maybe t- this week and then maybe next week will like, you know, start this other quarterback. You can't do that in the NFL. There has to be some consistency. So I I just I, I don't know, like I kind of question this, like, you know, strategy sometimes. As far as, uh, you know, just uh, play calling um, decisions uh, that he makes, like, you know, in crunch time, uh, particularly in the fourth quarter. Actually, you know, one story, um, the last the last time I was in Bank of America, uh, you know, we, we were uh, playing Washington 
And this was actually the day, this was the day that um, it was Cam Newton's uh, first home game uh, back uh, back in Carolina. And like, we, we were down four in the fourth quarter. We were like in a, an area where like, we're not in field goal range, but we're like in that area where like, we can go for it on fourth down. Uh, we're not, we only have like maybe like six, seven yards to go on fourth down. We can go for it. And we literally like the crowd literally had to say like, no, like, boo, go for it, go for it. Like, come on. Like, I, it's just, I think he had like this mindset of like, okay, in college, like, you know, make the first, like the first down, the clock stop. Like, no, like, I feel like he, he, like in the back of his mind, some of that still exists. So this is definitely like a hot seat year for, for him. Um, I feel like within the first four weeks, if we don't get like maybe two wins, I, he should be out of there because there's no there's no obvious change. I mean, we've had we brought in a better a better quarterback. Um, we've made changes to our um, uh, in our to our coaching staff. Um, I think or at least to to me, we have a, a defense that is talented and, and and can be able to help us turn the ball over and help our offense a lot more. Um, I'm not really sure how our offense will look this year, but yeah, this is definitely a hot seat, uh, hot seat year for him. And this is, this is actually a good opportunity, you know, for this hot seat agenda actually. So I hope that that starts, you know, um, and yeah, like, so I, I don't really trust the, I don't really trust them, but you know, it is what it is. So the question, the, the question is here too, it, does he actually have a plan? It it never seems like the there is one because all of the moves that he's made in recent recent memory, right, have been purely reactionary. Like when when Darnold wasn't doing well last year to bring back Cam Newton because everybody likes or to a degree likes Cam Newton. Um, like, is there even is he in over his head? Like, do you feel like that with his resume, like you said, he he has an idea of how to coach, but maybe he's not the best fit for grown men at this level. And it's the same thing, you know, like to a, to a greater degree that happened to, to Urban Meyer, like his was much different. He had a lot of other extenuating circumstances. But when you're trying to make a locker room your friend rather than them being basically – employees to 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 an extent right is there a plan there like does he actually feel like he's being successful or is he overthinking things that should just be easy like i mean i know from when you're saying in the stands everybody's like no don't do it like is he overthinking things i think sometimes he is and even like to go even like further back from even like when we traded for Sam Darnold, even like his first year uh, coaching in 2020, we signed Teddy Bridgewater for uh, three years, 65 million, I believe. And then after one year, I mean, obviously we had a rough year, but even, even after that, um, he was gone. When you had other, you had you had other options at quarterback that you could that you could have explored. Like so, we still had uh, Cam Newton from 2019 uh, under contract, and we decided not to you know, have him come, come back for 2020. Um, and, uh, we, we could have even gotten Jameis Winston before he went to the saints. We could have got him on a one year deal, but that didn't happen. We could have, we, we could have made uh, decisions at quarterback where it could have been just short-term decisions just to see how it goes and then figure out, okay, like, okay, if we stink, at least we can draft a quarterback in the first round, or at least we'll be high enough to draft a quarterback in the first round. And that actually could have happened, you know, even in our 20, uh, last year in uh 2021 draft when Justin Fields was available, but we took JC Horn, J nothing against JC Horn. I think he's a very talented corner, but we, but we had an opportunity to get like a young guy that we could have built around. But given that we traded for Sam Donald at the time, I, I knew I had, I had a feeling that wasn't even going to happen. So mm -hmm. the decisions that are made, like it's, it spans back to even two years ago. And we've just been trying to like figure out how to fix it. Like just these quick fix fixes and it's not going to, it's not working. So yeah. now, yeah. Well, yeah, so do you that think that kind of goes to the college part? Because unless I'm mistaken, 
it's only him and Pete Carroll are the only two college coaches in the league right now. And this is Carroll's yeah. second time going around in the league. And the thing that strikes me with all these college guys, I think Urban said it the best, who is the worst coach I think of my life. Um, his best skill is recruiting, which yeah. is fine if you're a, because in recruiting in college football, it's not a level playing field. Bama should destroy everyone because they got the best players. Um, right. It doesn't mean Saban's, you know, recruiting wins more than that. And but because of the draft, the NFL is essentially level. So being able to recruit is irrelevant. Um, and to me, that, that, that's the big part that, that he's missing. And then it's all short-term panicky stuff, as you're saying there. Um, but what I wanted to say there about Teddy was, I remember when he went to Denver, that him and Rural were like such not on the same page that he would say that they didn't even practice the, the, the red zone drills. Like they did zero red zone prep yeah. for the whole season. I'm like, mm -hmm. this is the NFL. You don't score 80 yard touchdowns. Like you might do it in Baylor when you're the only people getting four, three players and you're in the big 12 and defense doesn't exist, but it does not work when you're in Pittsburgh, yeah. you're going to have to go through the 20 yard line. Like it, to, to me, that was mind boggling that he's not doing red zone work. Like, that's the first thing you should do. Yeah, I, I mean, even even going back to like rules cause days. I mean, like like at Temple and Baylor. Yeah, I I can't really recall like any. I'm sure like there there have been NFL players from Baylor from 2017 uh, into 2019, but uh, Temple. I mean, he did. He had Robbie Anderson, who's a a wide receiver for us now. He had he had PJ Walker. Um, uh, you know, who went from Temple to. Uh, the XFL actually, and then came to uh, Car the Carolina Panthers. So I mean, but who, even like, if you're if you're gonna get a guy from college, like, let's say okay, like if we're looking at a guy, like I, I remember when um, uh, Lincoln Riley uh, was getting you know looks. I mean, yeah, that that guy has sent players to. He he's he's been he's been a guy that's like uh, you know I think he I think he even uh, coached. Um, God, some quarterback. I I, for, I I I think he coached Baker Mayfield, right? Yeah, Lincoln Riley oh, yeah, coached yeah. three Heisman winners well, in a row. Yeah, and he coached um, and, and didn't he coach uh, Kyler Murray, right? I it think was, so. Yeah, it was Murray, yeah. Hurts, and right. Baker. Those were right. his three Heisman helps. And then even uh, Cl even uh, Cliff Kingsbury in uh, Arizona coached. Uh, you know, he had some ties to Kyler Murray as well. Uh, so as far as like you know, when he was an offensive coordinator, or when he was at uh, Texas Tech, I believe. So. Um, yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta get guys that have some type of really like strong, like specialty, you know, right. Mm -hmm. Like, it, especially if you're going to make that, that switch, even like when, when rule came, he brought in uh Joe Brady, uh, from LSU who had just won, you know, he was the offensive coordinator, um, uh, under uh coach O at uh, LSU and they had just won a national championship, you know, with, with, uh, with Joe, with Joe Burrow, Jamar mm -hmm. Chase, Justin Jefferson, uh, Randy Moss's son, Daddy is my all those guys, and mm -hmm. it just it didn't translate to what we were trying to do, you know, like for for our team. So you got you like when when you're making when you when you're trying to pick a coach like that, it's it's like man, like you you really have to really like be lucky and, and pick a right guy. I feel like you know, obviously, a guy like um like the Harbaugh's, for example, I think they. They have experience like with co with college and both college and the NFL. I feel like I feel like well, obviously Harbaugh went to the Super Bowl with the 49ers. So I mean, mm -hmm. I mean he has experience. But um, even even when um, we got rid of uh, we fired Ron Rivera and then hired Rule. Like after we fired Ron Rivera, um, I I personally wanted uh, the Kansas City uh, Chiefs uh, offensive coordinator Eric uh, Bieniemy. I wanted mm -hmm. him because. I I want I I knew that he would be able to do like innovative things like mm -hmm. with an offense, so I wanted I wanted someone like him, and you know but like rule I guess you know temper and rule this relationship even I think even Matt Rule wanted to even go to the Giants I think mm -hmm. like I think his first his preference was like the Giants before mm -hmm. coming to Carolina and even you know what's crazy mm -hmm. is this past season there was a there was like this rumor. I, I think it's just more so a rumor. I don't know if it's like an official report that when the job, when like some jobs for like, I think for Michigan and USC opened up, um, rule was, you know, 
kind of entertaining those uh, those opportunities. Yeah. And it's rumored that he said to the team that I could just go back to college, but I'm going to stay here because I'm dead. I'm I'm dedicated to you guys. I'm like, why? Why would you even? Why, why does that even matter? Why, why yeah. does that even matter, man? Like, yes. Joe, I got a question for Dave here. Yeah. So when 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 we talk about um, you were mentioning all the decisions that have led up to this year, the fact that Matt Rule is still there, the fact that the owner is still doing his thing. In the last three years or the last four years, how much has the decision making process set this team back from where it could be? Um, when we look at their roster now, you know, we, we, we know Christian McCaffrey's there. We know DJ Moore. We know Robbie Anderson. We know that the defense has had its ups and downs, you know, recently. But especially at the quarterback position where you mentioned, you know, there are guys that were out there that could have been gotten for for a price that would have been okay. And now you're looking at Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Matt Corral, and P.J. Walker, right? When you when you look at that, you know those quarterbacks. Do you feel like any of them can take this team back to a Super Bowl, or even a playoffs, or even a winning record in a consistent way that they would be comfortable enough building around one of those guys on their team? So I don't think any of these quarterbacks, as of today, can lead this team to a Super Bowl. Um, I'm not sure how good Matt Corral will be eventually. I think he needs he needs at least a year. I think he needs maybe even two years probably. But I, I see a lot of potential in him. But none of these quarterbacks like as like so focusing more on Baker and Sam, Sam Sam, Sam, we Super Bowl and Sam should not be in the same <laughs> in the same paragraph. Let, let's let's just start there. Let's start there. Like you, I mean. We we all got a, a version of Sam Darnold in our in our in our homes. I got a trash. I got a couple of trash cans in my kitchen in my bedroom. <laughs> I know I'm sure you got a couple of trash cans in your place, Joe. I know you got some over in your place. Sam, Sam should not even be in even in that type of talk, even in playoff talk. Even I don't even know if even winning games talk. It's it's crazy. It's 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 it's. it's it's, it's it's like what they what they say on TV. It's ass a nine, ass a ten, ass a oh it's 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 crazy. The unmitigated so, so goal to have him in that same paragraph, man. So no. basically taking a quarterback from the Jets is a bad idea. Look, look, so so we in 2021, we started off three and zero, right? We started off three and zero. So we beat the Jets the first game. We beat them by five points. We shouldn't have beat them by five points. We, it should have been more than that. But you know, mm -hmm. Sam was overthrowing. Uh, there were a couple of drop passes here and there. Um, the defense was was balling, was was doing the best they can actually. And obviously, I mean, Zach Wilson was you know first first NFL game. He's not going to do that well, especially against you know. And we, I, I feel like we have a very solid front seven. I mean, I won't say like it's an elite, but I think it's very solid. I think our 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 defense. I think our, I feel like our defense. It's it's a playoff defense. I, I'd say that. Um, but we start off three and zero playing the Jets, and then playing a the Saint, a Saints team that was, uh, you know, just had a bunch of injuries, a bunch of things happening. You know, coaches out. I think Sean Payton was was not even coaching that game. And then the third game was against the Houston Texans, and yeah. the Houston Texans were at the bottom of the league. Um, and after that was our first real game against the Dallas Cowboys. And we hung with them until Trayvon Diggs picked off Sam Donald, I think a couple times in the third quarter. We fought back, but you know, we ended up losing by eight. We fought back, but that's a game where you can you can kind of live with it. Like mm -hmm. it was at Dallas. Dallas is obviously a better team. Um, you can live with that. But then you go you go back home, you lose to uh the Eagles um at home. You lose to the Vikings at home. You go and lose to the Giants. You get blown out by the Giants. You get you get you get the Philly special hung on you by Daniel Jones. Ugh. Like, come on, like it's embarrassing. It's yeah. a, it's embarrassing, man. The re the, like yo like it's it's embarrassing. The re you you know what's not keeping me embarrassed? This ice I got right now. Right now. <laughs> that's what, that's what's not keeping me embarrassed. But 
look like you you have that and your your quarterback is supposed to win you games like this. We we lost. I, I can't even like like our our record in like close games that are like I think within like five points or seven points is like two of two and eight or something something crazy. And like I, I don't know. Like yeah. Like so it's so it's something crazy. So I can't even remember. It's so crazy. But like you, I believe you, you it. Need a, you need a quarterback. Like the game, like the early games against like the Eagles and the Vikings were winnable games. They could have changed like how we our season went. And it's even like when we were um when we were five and even when we were five and five, um our la- like our last win before the end of the season against um Arizona, you know, that's the game that uh Cam Newton came back. He wasn't he wasn't starting and Sam Newton uh, sorry, sorry, um Sam Darnold was hurt actually. Um, and we were we were doing this whole two QB system with you know PJ Walker and, and Cam Newton. Um, it seemed to work that day. Um, and then you know Cam Newton became the starter after that, and things just kind of you know just, um, went, just downhill. Went, went, went downhill for us. So, um, but I feel like games like that early in the season where you're you're close and you're getting to the red zone, you're not. You're you're either like not getting fit, you're not getting even like three points out of it, or you're, you're getting three points, or either not getting it, or you're not getting touchdowns, and you're just squandering those opportunities where you can like just crush opponents and get big big leads on them, and you know dictate the the pay, dictate the momentum of the game. So I feel like, you know, I mean, I don't I don't think that we would have done much. I mean, regardless of. Maybe mm-hmm. like some of those games turned into wins, but I mean it it would have it would have been a better season for us for sure. But where but going back, Bob, to uh, your question about uh where we are now and could it have been better even like when rules started? Yeah, it could have been better. Um it could have been better even like for our, our salary cap as well. Cause we gave all this money to Teddy and I think I mean I think we're still probably paying him the guaranteed money. Um, I, don't I, I mean, obviously, I mean, Sam Donald, we're still paying him. I mean, we could have did something that like if we're not going to do, we could have either like done something where it's like, OK, let's let's keep let's keep Cam Newton since he was our star. Let's keep him. Let's keep mm-hmm. let's even keep um, some of our previous quarterbacks, even even if you wanted to keep Kyle Allen. I, I'm not I'm not a fan of Kyle Allen, but you want to keep someone that has experience with the offense. Right. OK, if, okay let's say you want to keep one of those guys. Let's see how it goes for a year. You're, there's, it's your first year in the, it's your first year coaching in the in the league. As long as you don't stink up the joint, like if, if you yeah. don't just, as long oh, as you don't, don't stink up, like as long as you don't urban mire it, you yeah. know, yeah, like as long as you true. don't do that. Like look, look at look at Dan Campbell at the Lions. Like I don't like worst worst team in the division still there. They they kept losing game after game after game after game after game for like ten weeks, and he's still there. He's still there because he knows how to. He he ha- he has like a vision for his team. Mm-hmm. For rule, it's hard to understand even what that vision is. We have to create the vision for ourselves. <laughs> That's what it sounds <laughs> like. It, 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 we, it seems yeah. like from the outside looking in that you guys are doing it backwards than most teams from a macro structure of the the company essentially because. Most teams, when they rebuild, that's on the general manager and not on the coach. The coach is just to, to make the better equation. But it seems like Matt Rule was hired because he can turn things around. And really, it's the job of the GM to say, no, getting a quarterback from the Jets is never a good idea. Or the Browns. And, well, the Browns have so many of them that you should just know that. But <laughs> – and my point being is it, it seems backwards, and to me that has to be on the owner because if yeah. you're the only one doing it like this, wh- like even Houston knows the coach isn't the one making the choice of rebuilding it. Like mm-hmm. Detroit got that. I mean, as you s- just said there, Campbell is not the one choosing the players. He's just trying to get them pumped up for every single game as he's biting kneecaps. Like that's not the coach's job, and I think that that, that is – part of the starting problem that before we get in all the trickle fact that he didn't know how to manage a game he doesn't even know how to get get the right people because it's not his get or shouldn't it be his get despite the fact that it was his primary get in college is is that at least accurate or is that completely off base yeah i mean i'll, I'll first say that 
the biggest problems with the Panthers are obviously, I mean, the 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 coaching, uh, you know, the coaching position, the coaching staff. I guess like you know the long the long term plan for the team, uh, as well as you know the quarterback position. But I actually have no problem with like the front office, other than the owner. Um, I don't have a problem with how we draft how how we've been drafting. Honestly, mm-hmm. like we've picked up some some solid players actually in the last three years. I like how we drafted this year. I like uh, the offensive line when we got Icky. Uh, I like I like Matt, Matt Corral for what we have at least right now. I like who we got in Jeremy Chin. I like what we did, you know, last year. You know, I like what, what we've gotten with, like, people like with Brian Burns and, and people like that. So, and even, like, trading for C.J. Henderson, which was, who was a first-round pick in 2020 with uh, Jacksonville. So, I, I like what we have been doing. You know, I like I like what our, um you know, I think uh, uh, Scott Fitterer is our is our GM. So, I, I like I like what he's been doing. I like the moves that he's been, he's been making. And even with Baker Mayfield, we didn't have to give up a lot to get him. And to say that, I I rather I we were we're in, I, honestly uh, we're to me we're in a better position than we were when back in February when it was just like Sam was like the clear cut guy and there was mm-hmm. no one else that was gonna be the starter. So um, I was actually in the mindset of thinking like, man, um, Sam Donald is gonna be the guy like week one. This is what I was thinking like back in March. Mm-hmm. April, like this is what I was thinking. Yeah, because because I was thinking like, man, um, okay, obviously, like w- Watson's not coming to us. I don't, I don't care what he what what's happening with that. He's not coming to us. Um, Baker Mayfield, I mean, he's he's probably gonna go to Seattle. Uh, he's not he's not coming here. But to get him here and um, to have them do like a, a quarterback competition, which is not even a competition anymore. Baker's. The guy is just a matter of when we're going to announce it. And I think that's that's also something that based on rules for uh, philosophy and what he's been doing, you know, in training camp and trying to create this culture of like, we're going to compete for everything. I mean, that sounds great, but how is it going to translate on the field? I, 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 I like based on just what we have right now, I I'm 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 maybe just content with you know just okay we have a better quarterback than what we did last year let's just see what we can do um can can baker get us to the playoffs he probably can um i won't guarantee it but i mean there's it's it's i mean things there's parody in this league you know Mm -hmm. especially in the nfc it it, it seems like the nfc has five teams that you can just they're in you know, the, the, the pretty much the, the division winners from each team, uh, from each division are pretty stable. And then either the Rams and San Francisco are going to be in. And then for that, those other two spots, it basically seems like it's you, the Saints, Minnesota seem to be the kind of three that maybe, maybe the Eagles or Dallas, like those three or four teams is really all you're fighting because Atlanta ain't doing it. Um, yeah. You know, I have no belief in Arizona. So at the end of the day, you know, there's not a whole lot of, I mean, the Giants aren't doing it. There's not a whole lot in, in that middle tier of the NFC. It, it's very top heavy and there's a lot of bottom in the NFC. Um, so I, I don't see a reason why they couldn't because one thing about Baker is he's not going to throw the game away. He might not throw you to victory, but he ain't going to throw it away. And you're also one of the very few teams that got a better running back than he left with. Um, so, yeah. you know, he, he, he loves, he really good at handing that ball off. Like he's really good at that. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, but it, it depends on like how, like how we maneuver through our schedule, because honestly, how even like us getting, like we will have to win like maybe 10 games, like nine or mm-hmm. 10 games mm-hmm. in order for us to get even like get to a wild card spot at least, because even our, in our division, there's, at least two teams better than us. There's but there's uh the Buccaneers and, and the Saints. I feel on paper they're better than us. Um, right. I think from a roster wise. All right, at least like you know, even competitive competitive, when you put them those two together, I mean uh-huh. I, I feel like we're probably gonna be third. Um so but if there's some way that we can be better than what we're supposed to be, we would have to like, you know, win our home games. We would have to win games that, you know, on teams that obviously you know they that have been struggling just like us like you know we have the we have we play the giants in week two 
we yep. we we should win that game. We play uh, Detroit later on in the season. The games against Atlanta, I'd, I'd love for us to win those games, especially if they're starting Mariota or, or Desmond Ritter, whoever. Um, I'd, I'd like for us to win those games. Um, but even if we can steal one, let's say, okay, like we can get, we can steal games like against Pittsburgh or like we can steal like maybe one of two against uh, New Orleans or we can even win our first game uh, against Cleveland. That is that is a good recipe for at least competing or at least being in that playoff hunt come, you know, week 12, week 13, week 14, or whatever it may be. So, yeah, uh, you know, look, yeah. looking at your schedule here, it, it does seem that the, the Watsonless Cleveland, because regardless of whether he gets six or 12 or a year, he definitely is not there for week one. Um, right. So, and, and Baker is many things, and spiteful is certainly one of them. So he's he's got to want to bring it to the, to the old club. Yeah, um, he, I think that, that's that's a pretty good barometer. Like if you guys drop with the Cleveland, I I don't I hate to say you should lose all hope on week one, but <laughs> it, no, it, no. if you can't beat a, a Cleveland with probably the fiftieth best quarterback in the NFL, um, in Br- in Brisket or however the hell you say Brissette. 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 There you go. Um, you're not going to beat anyone. You, you might as well just because he's he's worse than Mariota. Um, in terms of, of what's going out there, and, and that's saying something. Well, also, when you look at this schedule, Dave, I'm I'm seeing six definite losses. Okay. I, I mean, the Rams, Cincinnati, okay. yeah, Baltimore, okay, Tampa, right? Put put two for Tampa. We're not being put, yeah, two for Tampa. Two for Tampa. And, <laughs> and and you're either and and it and depends on uh, depends on Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson, but those two games. Could be really, you know, really rough depending on what the what their offenses want to do and if and if the Panthers' offense can keep up. So I mean, when when you look at it, you said that you know, in order to get back to the playoffs, you're looking at nine or ten wins. It seems if they steal a couple games, like you said from the Steelers, you know, it, it seems like it could be possible, um, but it yeah, definitely it is cutting it close. Yeah, I mean, for me, like you know, going through this schedule, um, I I saw like maybe the ceiling being like seven wins, just re- being like realistic, like week by week, like just how things may change in the league, and you know, obviously, I mean, injuries will happen. Sure, I I saw seven and ten, but I would lo- I would love for us to be better than that, obviously, but. Um, I mean, just being a realistic fan and, and, and even we, even like thinking about, um, how well, how well is Baker going to do? How, how healthy is Christian McCaffrey going to be? Um, you know, like just thinking how, how good of, is our offensive line actually going to be? Right. Cause this, our offensive line, you know, in the last two months of last year was atrocious. Um, and they, it, it actually our offensive line has been a problem uh for the like the last like five years honestly um so how how better will they be um how healthy will we be Uh um uh how well will we do on defense uh will we uh because i mean at some point in time you know last season we were we were in the top five we were a top defense yeah We, Mm -hmm. we were pretty good um but after but i can understand that after a while when you're just relying on your defense so much, they get like you can't really sustain that. Them relying on them to get you the ball back and, and you know to stop the other team. Uh, you have, your offense has to be able to put points on the board and to at least have the defenses back. So um, right. for me, just being realistic, just feeling, just getting kind of a, a realistic feel of how things will go, uh, just based on you know the team and how I see it. I say seven and ten. But so, with, with that being said, which for each direction, the loss and the win, what are the two that you're most confident that will go that way? The win and the loss. Um, the most confident that I'm in, uh, we beat Detroit for sure. Okay, uh, we're gonna beat Detroit. Um, the one that I feel like will lose is at Tampa. Um, I think we'll back to back that. weeks, <laughs> sixteen yeah. and seventeen. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll lose at Tampa. Um, 
<laughs> week 17, depending on our situation, we might lose that too. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, well Dave, we, we appreciate all the information you're giving us so far. We're going to do the quick ad break, and then we're going to focus on um, the fantasy side of the world when we come back on the other side. This episode is sponsored by the podcast Father and Joe. Father and Joe aims to bring individuals into a better relationship with God. Each episode discusses an element of the human experience that we all can relate to, as well as questions about faith. What are indulgences? What's going on with purgatory? Why can I mentally grasp the concept of God, but I don't feel him in my heart? During each episode of Father and Joe, we are invited to enhance our relationships, and in doing so, we will improve ourselves and society. Download Father and Joe every Tuesday. We thank you for watching this episode of Local Football Flavor. We know there's a lot of different options out there for you to be doing with your listening and viewing content, so we thank you for giving us a chance. If watching this, you want to become a part of it, you want to have your little sponsor logo right up here at the top, you want to have a message down here at the bottom, please reach out to us, localfootballflavor at gmail.com. We're always looking for more guests, more sponsors, but above all, if you just want to help us passively, please click that subscribe button down below. We cannot tell you how much that's helping us, giving us more morale, and gets us better guests moving forward. Better guests, better information, better bet results, better fantasy wires. Local football flavor, we're here for you. Please be here for us. Now, let's return to the episode. So, when we're talking fantasy football in Carolina... The, the first target's McCaffrey. I mean, it, it, it's got to be black and white. When, when he's on the field, there is no better fantasy player, really, let alone running back. So my question is, is he ever not going to get hurt? Um, like, can we really rely on him? Or is it, I'm going to win the first three weeks of my fantasy league, then not make the playoffs because I don't have a running back anymore? Yeah, um, so that's that's one of the things that uh, I'm even looking for, looking towards as far as how we're gonna uh, keep McCaffrey healthy this year. Um, how are we gonna limit the times that he gets hit? Um, how how are we gonna are, are we gonna do kind of you know the the east to west type of thing with him where you know he you know tries to you know um, go not go between the tackles but go around? Uh, how how exactly are we going to um, handle? you know, his, his health. And I, I'm optimistic about it. I feel like he'll play most of the season. Um, I think there may be like a couple weeks here and there that me, he may, he may have, he may be questionable. Um, but I feel like out of um, a 17 game season, I'd say he'll play uh, 13 okay. of those games. So historically, what kind of injuries does he get? Is it like a lingering hammy soft tissue stuff or has it been like one off crap? um like hamstring leg leg, in, leg injuries um it's it's just like you know you, you just he's he's a small guy right i think he's not even like six feet six foot i, I don't think so a guy like that I, I mean obviously like for what he does for us he like he he can get you like seven eight yards here and there every like every time he, he's like a guy that can help us move the chains a lot but um i think like, i mean for me like he, but he could get hit, like, you know, you know, to get him down, obviously, I mean, how defenders are, like, hitting now, they're hitting, like, for the leg. Because mm -hmm. if you hit towards the, the even, like, towards the head, I mean, obviously they're going to call, they call more flags sure. on that now. Yeah. Uh -huh. So his injuries are more so, like, um, you know, not necessarily, like, they're not even upper body, like, as much. They're more so, like, towards the calf, the hamstring, um, the, you know, groin, things like that. So, I think the, I know the last the last one that was uh, that was bothering him last year. His hamstring was bothering him a lot last year, um, and that's that's why you know he wasn't was able wasn't able to play as much, um, you know. So, uh, well, looking but, at the looking at the year, Dave, I, you know, he had three healthy seasons prior to these two injury plagued yeah. seasons where he only played ten games, right? So. When we think of his health throughout the season, do you think he can, you know, for, for fantasy football, say you take him first, second, third, or fourth overall, depending on how far he slides, do you think that he can 
where is his season going to be played at? If you're thinking 13 games, is it going to be like a, a nice big chunk, a block where you're getting through like six or seven games and then sitting out a couple games and then getting the back end where you're getting in the fantasy playoffs? So what are you thinking in terms of where those games are played and are they going to be played when people need him to? Because that's a big risk to go one, two, three, four overall. and then you know, doesn't really do anything. Yeah, so McCaffrey is still a guy that I believe you can, at least this year, you can pick him, you know, as your first running back. I, I feel like he's still a guy that you can you can trust in that way. And, you know, everyone's healthy at the beginning of the season. I feel like he will produce a lot, you know, especially like in the first, like, in the first month of the season. Um, once you get to week six, week seven, you may start you, – this is where, you know, the injuries start kind of piling up for people. And um, I don't want this for McCaffrey. Um, I just say maybe there may be weeks where he's not necessarily, like, doubtful but maybe questionable. And But I feel like how we're limiting that this year is we brought in, you know – I mean, we still have Chuba Hubbard, um, you know, our, our pick from um, uh, lat or 2020. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, or so he's, he's coming into a, a new year now. And we have Dante Dante Foreman, who used to play for the Broncos. So um, those guys should be able to take the load off of him a little bit more. Uh -huh. um, and then those are also guys. Uh, I'm not saying that you should pick them in fantasy because these are guys that they can only maybe carry the load for like maybe one week at, <laughs> every 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 so often. Right. Um, but I feel like McCaffrey is still a guy that you can pick him in the first round. You can pick him in the first round and he'll still produce for you. I don't think that you'll you'll have a year like last year where the first three weeks he's there and then he's gone for a long period of time, then he's back and he's gone. I, I feel like we've made some adjustments now and I'm I'm being optimistic about our offensive line too with this. So um I feel like, you know, we have like some backs where and this is something that the Panthers have done, you know, in the past where we have someone that's like very speedy, someone that's like you know, a scat back type of guy. Uh -huh. And then we have someone that's like in the trenches, someone that can get you those, those third and twos, those fourth and ones. We have got, have had guys like that. <clears throat> Just going back to um, who we had the, even um, with uh, D'Angelo Williams and, and Jonathan Stewart, you yep. know, we've, we've had, we've had guys like the, uh, even going way back to the early two, two thousands, Deshaun Foster and Steven Davis guys that, you know, had different type of running styles. So I feel like we have something like that here to kind of limit his touches. So I feel like this season, um, you can you can you can put your trust on him. But I feel like after this season, if you can't if you can't get the same production from McCaffrey that you were getting his first few years in the league, it's over. Um, uh -huh. This I think this is unless like he has uh, a big year. Again, mm -hmm. and uh, if he has a big year, then it's just a rejuvenation thing. And I feel like, you know, next year he'll be he'll be someone that you can pick in the first round again. But if it's right. if it's again like if it's something where, um, even like if if he if he's hurt like half the season, um, this is the last year that you can pick him as a first round running back. He he'll he'll then he'll now become a guy where okay maybe we can put him in the flex or maybe he can be my second running back. Right. But I think I think this is like maybe the 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 pressure year for him uh, as far as fantasy wise um, that you can still like pick him high. You know, right. He can be. Like, yeah. So. So, so building uh, off that. Uh, hold on, Jeff. One minute. I, I got a, I got a second question off of that one. <laughs> so say say he's healthy. Say he's healthy. He plays his 16 games or he plays his 13 games. How does this make the potential? for DJ Moore to be even better because right now his ADP is pretty good. Yeah. You know, when you think about, when you think about Robbie Anderson and you think about a um, couple other guys on the team, if he, if Christian McCaffrey's humming, how does this make Baker Mayfield's job easier? And do you feel that DJ Moore has a chance to, um, be just as productive, if not more productive, than he was last year. 
Yeah, so I feel like, you know, given like McCaffrey's production, um, DJ Moore is still going to be a guy that you can rely on. And that's actually the guy that I would like implore everyone to, you know, look out for him for fantasy because he's a guy that gets a thousand yards receiving in the last three years with, you know, post prime Cam Newton throwing to him, Sam Donald throwing to him, Kyle Allen throwing to him, Taylor, Taylor Heineke throwing to him. These quarter like he's he's still getting a thousand yards receiving. And even in his rookie year, he got a thousand yards from scrimmage. And it's crazy to me that we don't use him the same way that we use like someone like Tyreek Hill or mm-hmm. Debo Samuel. Um, particularly Debo Samuel, because I, I feel like they ha- kind of have like the same type of body stature almost. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I feel like I feel like DJ Moore may be a little bit smaller, but still. Um but to use him, I mean, to still use that quickness, just to use him around the field, um, he may he may not because I feel like Baker is a guy that wants to throw the ball around. I, I feel like he wants to make sure that, um, especially like now, I think I think like in his rookie year and his second year, he was locking on to like Odell and and Jarvis and mm-hmm. would not think about the next option. And I feel like now he's like. You know, okay, I'm a, like when those guys when he doesn't have like a top receiver, like in Cleveland when he had like Peoples Jones and and um you know and Joku and, and and guys like that, he had to spread the ball around in order to succeed. So I feel like he may bring that same type of philosophy here. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I'm still confident that DJ Moore will get his his thousand yards receiving because I mean he's done it with subpar quarterbacks. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like Baker Mayfield is probably like I mean it's the second best quarterback that he's he's played with. I mean, to, to in my opinion, yeah, um, behind, true. behind Cam, behind mm-hmm. Cam because when he when, during his rookie year he had Cam um, his rookie year like and to think about it, we were six and two um, back in uh, I believe it was 2017 the 2017 sweet season we were six and two before that Pittsburgh game. Pittsburgh fans, uh, you TJ Watt busted up his Cam Newton's shoulder, no, so no. every so everything just went downhill, just like it did last year. After that, so mm-hmm. DJ Moore even got like a thousand yards from scrimmage uh, that his rookie season, and there was a lot of comparisons when he came out to he was being compared to Steve Smith, a, a former uh, Carolina Panthers great, and just as far as like how he's he's able to like you know just how he's able to position himself against corners when going up for the ball. So, um, yeah, I, I feel like he's still going to be produced. Um, obviously, like with McCaffrey, like if when McCaffrey's producing, I feel like even though maybe D, DJ Moore might have like less receiving yards, he may just like have like up to like maybe like 900 or 1,000, especially if like Robbie Anderson's getting, um, first of all, if Robbie's catching the ball more, <laughs> um, he had a lot of he had a, a lot of drop passes last yeah. year, and also I mean I think he had, Robbie had like 588 receiving yards last year, uh-huh. which is insane. Like, and I feel I feel like that number should grow um, this year. And so, if, if obviously I mean if we're doing this, we're obviously scoring more points. So mm-hmm. um, I feel I, I still I'm still confident that DJ Moore will get his thousand yards, um, and it might even be more. If even if McCaffrey's like open it up like that, so um, and I think even even if it's not the if you don't see the production more in yards, you'll see it in touchdowns, right? Okay, that makes sense. So, one thing with Baker, just knowing him from Cleveland, is he essentially is going to make your tight end non existent. Um, the Joku actually is a talented tight end who got worse and worse years as Baker got there. Now, you can make the argument, well, that's when Odell <laughs> showed up, so Odell deserves the, the targets. So my question for you is looking specifically at your tight ends, is that an area that, that you'd want to avoid or target just based upon the talent that you guys have at your tight end, in your tight end room, essentially? Um, as, as fantasy wise, I want to recommend um, our tight end. Um, our starting tight end right now is Tommy Tremble. Um, you know, second year guy out of Notre Dame. Um, I wouldn't recommend him just because I don't think he's gotten to like, the potential yet i feel i mean there's there's other tight ends that are better than him um but i 
it's it's going to be interesting, you know, to see like how he's going to be used in this offense now that he's the guy. I mean, uh, he he became the guy like mid year last year um, okay. after we after we had traded uh we had tra- we had Dan Arnold to start the season last year. Then we had traded him uh, to uh, Jacksonville. I think mm-hmm. this was the C.J. Henderson trade. So um, it's interesting to see. Uh, the other tight end is uh, Ian Thomas. Don't really, I don't really think that high live Ian, Ian Thomas, at least playing wise. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really, I, I definitely wouldn't say pick him on your fantasy team. Don't. Yeah. Please, please so, don't. So, uh, avoid um, tight ends. Is, is there someone that's aside from Moore and McCaffrey that we should target looking at the Panthers for basically their relative draft slot and, and where that draft slot would be, quite frankly? Um, so I won't, I won't say a particular person, but I, I will say the Panthers defense should be one of the defenses that you pick up. I, I feel like there'll be a defense that you can rely on, uh, to get you points. Um, I feel like, you know, like in sacks, uh, I, I hope that, you know, guys like, uh, Jeremy Chin and Dante Jackson can, uh, you know, increase our, you know, can get in those, can make the secondary a lot better. And, and uh, get some interceptions uh, this year. So um, I feel like the Panthers are a team that you can, you you know, you can have as like your starting defense. Um, but if Baker Mayfield is playing well after, you know, maybe the first month of the season, that could be your backup quarterback. Uh-huh. You know, let's say like, for example, you have like maybe Lamar Jackson as your starting quarterback. When he's on a bye, put in, uh, put in Baker Mayfield. So if he if he's playing that well though, I think you have to you have to give him some time. And even mm-hmm. like you know, I I've I've been, you know, it's it's been satisfying to see that, you know, someone that, you know, came in July, um, and now, you know, after training camp going into preseason, he's been able to pick up the playbook uh fairly well. And Sam Donald has had the playbook. Longer than Baker, and he's, uh, <laughs> well, I think he's, he's already, <laughs> and he's already, uh, he's already, he's uh, like the, that gap is. There's not, there's not a gap anymore. Um, it's, it's, so it's Baker. The, no the gap is, yeah. is Baker. Is Baker and then and then Sam. So, um, yeah, like so, I I feel like if he's playing well, especially like our our first few games. I mean, you know, I mean Cleveland, we have to worry about. Their Miles Garrett and, and and things like that, but we're playing the Giants. Um, the Giants are not going to be that good this year, um, you know. So, and I feel like there's there's that first for that first month, there's potential for Baker to play very exceptionally well, um, and you know that could be a guy that you can say, hey, you know, oh my quarterback's hurt, let me let me plug in Baker. That could be a guy, mm-hmm. maybe like for your waiver wire, so. Yeah, I, feel I really that. appreciate that. And, and actually, on that note, um, Giants will be on Friday, so we get to talk about <laughs> them with, with, with what's going on there. So, um, and not to be on, on the pessimist side, but you, mm-hmm. you did bring up, and this will be my last question about your running back room. You did bring up that you brought in Freeman. So, I obviously McCaffrey's the guy there, but if he yeah. does go down, who's the handcuff? I, is it Hubbard or is it Freeman? Um, I, I think, think that. Yeah, 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 Dante Foreman. So I think the guy would be so, so first of all, I mean, if that if that was to happen, that first game, they would split. They would they it would it would be like a split type of thing. But Foreman is I actually I feel I feel like I feel like they're kind of like relatively like the same as far as experience. I know I remember Foreman from Texas, but I don't remember what year he came out of. Um but I feel like Chuba Chuba has been in the offense longer, so you would go with him. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if Foreman takes those carries from him. So basically, if I'm getting you right, it's when McCaffrey's there, it, you guys are going to be a single running back town. But if he goes down, you guys are going to become a split running back town. And in that regards, kind of cannibalizing yourself. I, I think I – think, um, if I were to put like percentages on it, like when McCaffrey's there, I think it'll be something like McCaffrey at eighty percent, and mm-hmm. then Chuba and Foreman are like ten percent each. 
I, okay. Chuba, Chuba and Former are going to get carries like when McCaffrey's there. It's just McCaffrey will get like 20, and then maybe yeah. like Chuba will get like five, and then Foreman will get like maybe five or four or five, whatever mm-hmm. it may be. That makes sense. But McCaffrey, McCaffrey's going to get the lion's share of the care of the carries. It's just a matter of like how how are we going to do that? What if, if it's going to be like if it's going to be you know just um the the um just the the dink and dunks the you know just the how how however we're going to do it like the the run the the RPOs I, I don't like I don't know but I, it's it just I feel like still um it's not McCaffrey just going to be like the only guy it's he's going to get the lion's share but yeah. Chuba. And Foreman, because like I like I was saying earlier, um, you don't want McCaffrey's like hits to add up. Um, you want him to not be you want. It's kind of like how like you treat like quarterbacks, like, you know, like mobile quarterbacks. You don't want them to get hit so much. Um, right. And this this is like exactly like how we um, were, was working with Cam. Newton. We didn't want him to get hit so much, you know, so like that that's, you know, like why, you know, People were saying, hey, he should throw from the pocket more. But McCaffrey, we have to find ways to limit, like, you're not going to, I mean, he's a running back. You're not going to, there's, he's going to obviously take hits, but you, you can limit maybe like the amount. Mm -hmm. And even like you have other running backs, you can uh, have them maybe do some of the, some of the same things as McCaffrey, just not as good. But, you know, it'll, it'll have to be like very, um, you'll have to like rely on situational football, and right. this is this is also you know why you know like coaching is a big factor in this. How <laughs> how and you know like our offense like our offensive coordinator like how, how are you going to use him? Like you got to be right. careful how you're going to use him. So that's that's going to be oh man like. I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Well, well, Dave, I, I, I definitely w- w- want to thank you for joining us here. Um, you know, this hour just kind of flew by here, but I did want to give you a, a chance to have a minute that if there's anything you want to talk about, give a folk uh, a spotlight on you, anything you want to promote yourself, anything uh, uh, of that nature, um, the, let us know what's up. Yeah, first of all, thank you guys for having me. Um, as you uh, see on the screen, uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, uh, Dr. Esquire Dave, that's D-R Esquire Dave. Um, I just got a message for everyone. Um, first off, uh, let's be kind to one another. Let's uh, let's let's put the guns down. Let's stop gun violence. There's way too much shootings, mass shootings happening. Uh, let's you know put pressure put pressure on changing those gun laws. Also, uh, let's protect our women. Uh, women's rights is important. It's not just a women issue. It's everyone's issue. Let's let's focus on that. Also. Um, Let's let's also uh, think about social injustice. Let's also not not put our foot away from the pedal on that. Uh, let's also let's think about how we teach our the younger generation, uh, how we talk to one another, the older generation, and um, peace, love, and happiness to everyone. Beautiful and well said. So we thank everyone for watching today's episode, and we'll be with you on Friday. Thank you for being a part of today's episode of Local Football Flavor. We ask everyone who's watched to please click that like button and subscribe. It obviously helps us a tremendous deal to come up for new fans. If you did want to be a part of the show, there are definitely links down in the description below, both to be a guest and to help us out as being a donating partner. You can have all kinds of fun things like behind me, instead of having a little Steelers teddy bear, we can have your logo or description. You can have your logo here on this football instead of the legendary Notre Dame Fighting Irish. So all of these things are available. Please click there and please watch the next episode to find out more about another team in the league that is also being lied about that the national media just doesn't have time to get right. But we do. That's why we exist. Local football flavor.